Welcome to our lecture online. Given the same problem as we saw in the previous video, but in this case switching A and B around, let's see if we can come to the same conclusion. Are these events independent or dependent? Again, we're dealing with the same college of 200 students. 140 of them are full-time, 60 are part-time. Of the full-time students, 80 are female and 60 are male. Of the part-time students, 40 are female and 20 are male. And again, event A is the student being full-time, event B the student being female. Are these dependent events? So what we're going to do again is say, if they're independent, and of course we should turn these around as well, let's do that. So here we're going to write this as, where's my red pen? Uh, the probability that B will occur given that A has occurred should equal the probability of B occurring if they are independent events. If they are dependent events, then that will not be the case. So we already calculated the probability of A and the probability of B. There's 140 full-time students uh, relative to the total student population. And probability for B, there's 120 females relative to the total number of students. And now we're going to calculate the probability that B will occur given that A has occurred. Well, if A has occurred, that means we're only talking about full-time students. And of the full-time students, 80 are female. That means the probability that B will occur will be 80. That means that we're picking a female student out of a body, a student body of 140 full-time students. So let's see what that's equal to. So we have 80 divided by 140, which is 0 0.57, 0 0.57. So you can see that the probability that B will occur, given that A has occurred, is not equal to the probability that B will occur, because that's 0 0.6 and that's 0.57. So therefore, we can conclude that the two events are dependent. And so, since they are dependent, then to calculate the probability of B and A, that will be equal to the probability of A times the probability that B will occur given that A has occurred. Sometimes you'll see it the other way around, but it doesn't really matter. So the probability of A is equal to 0 0.7, and the probability that B will occur given that A has occurred is 0 0.57 to do decimal places. And let's see here, we multiply the times 0.7, and that will be equal to 0.4. Now notice that's the same result we got on the previous video where we calculated the probability of A and B. Of course, that should, should be the same as the probability of B and A. In other words, B is that the student is female, A is that the student is full-time. That would be this right here, there's 80 female students that are also full-time students out of the total population of 200. So we can say that 80 divided by 200 should indeed equal 0 0.4. So you can see that that is correct. And let me make that look like a 4 a little bit more. There we go. And so you can see that either way we can determine whether or not events are dependent or independent by using these techniques. And that is how it's done.